Hi, my name is Chris, and I'm here to teach you how to create or import an account to interact with Ethereum, and we use it through Ape Account. One of the most important tools that you can uh, use through Ape is to create and import an account to interact with Ethereum. You can think of an account like a wallet. So the purpose of the account is to interact with a contract and have certain key features that make it useful. For example, an account is a wallet with a public address and a private key. It can be created through Ape or import it with a private key. So a use case would be, say you have a, a wallet that has already has some ETH in it and um, you want to be able to play with it, you can import it using your private key. Um, an account is used to sign messages or transactions. So it's basically a way to interact with your contract. Like for example, you want to deploy it or you want to um, send transactions or send tokens to people, you need an account with ETH. So, uh, to create an account, you will be prompted to create a private key based on a seed phrase that you give and a password uh, is required to protect this, pri uh, this private key. So the only way you, this password is uh, stored is uh, never on your computer. And so you would need to remember it and the public address is actually very, it is viewable on Etherscan. So, why we chose to do it like this is because we don't like storing API keys or account passwords in a .env file. So storing your passwords or sensitive data, it's always been up for debate, but here at Apeworks, we decided that storing your API keys and, a pa and passwords in a .env file is nice and it's useful, but you run into the possibility of accidentally pushing that .env file into a repository. So I would consider this human error. And to mitigate that, we recommend storing these uh, passwords and API keys in a .bash RC file for Linux and a .zsh RC for Mac. You're highly unlikely to push this file because it's hidden by default. So go ahead and try it this way, but if you have another way that you feel comfortable, by all means. So Ape Accounts has private keys generated and stored in an encrypted file with an AES-128 algorithm. And um, if you wanted to read more about it, you can read our open source code here. We use this ETH account method from the from here, and we import it and use it and create the generation in here. Right here. So you can uh, go into a little bit more about it if you want to understand. So one use case that we don't recommend using Ape accounts creation is if you're going to use significant funds, we would highly recommend using our other plugins called Ape Leisure or Trezor because they are hardware wallets and they are definitely a little bit more safe. And um, we have we let you access these hardware wallets using our plugins. So now that we've gotten security out of the way and other recommendations and making sure that this is right for you, let's uh, get into actually how we make it. So. Tutorials on accounts in action. The very first step are the requirements. And the first thing you we would recommend is finding a way for you to remote access into a blockchain. And so we would recommend using Alchemy or Infura. And I would follow those steps into getting an API key. And uh, just, you know, sign up using whatever you want and whatever you're comfortable with. And once you get your um, API key, for example, for the purposes of this project, we're gonna use Alchemy. We're gonna try and store it in the in an environment variable in your bash RC, since I'm running it on Windows in a, a WSL uh, Linux base. So the first thing that we wanna do is get our, uh, you know, API key, copy that down, and then put it in our bash RC file. And so the way we do that is we open it um, in terminal. You know, we do the vim right here and get into it and copy here this, paste it at the very bottom, make sure you give it a couple new new lines, uh, save it, and then source the bash rc file. Because the bash rc is right here. 
it starts whenever you start a terminal and it loads all of your basically all of your environment variables and all the other scripts that you have inside there so every time you run a new fresh terminal this it's always preloaded in there for you so if you want to really re read a little bit more about this go ahead and super user has a really good site on that too so so now that we have loaded you can check to make sure that it is there we do the echo dollar sign the variable name and don't forget the dollar sign because you just echo uh, the variable the same name if you put the dollar sign you get the value of it so now that we've gotten the value of it we're going to try and create the wallet so let's uh, get started so now that we're in here you don't need to be in here you all you need to all you need to do is be able to access ape make sure that it's a it's a plugin that's installed. You can check by having all this right here. And the first command they're going to try is accounts. So ape accounts, check it out. There are a couple commands that come with it powerful. And so the very first thing we're going to try and do is generate. So actually before, since I've already done this a couple of times, let me just check to make sure that we have a name that we can use by checking the list of accounts. So I have a bunch of accounts that have some sort of testnet ETH in here, and I'm gonna try and create an account that is not the same alias. Account demo two, because I'm unoriginal. Do some seed phrase, password. Perfect. Okay, great. Now that we have this right here, copy that and uh, move on. And now that we've created an account, you can also import it using a private key here. You can verify it by doing this. Okay, there she is. We want to try and load it. So one thing to note is that we're going to try and load this and before we do this we need to go into ape console so ape console do save it to a variable we do demo to equal to accounts load and it's called account demo Demo two. There it is. Demo two. Dot balance. We should not have anything. Perfect. Okay. So before we before we do the test balance like this, we want to be able to add ETH to your wallet. So let's see what can we do. So let's add some testnet ETH to play with um testnet ETH is a, a blockchain that this is always very useful for developers where we can create and deploy contracts in a test environment so we don't actually use mainnet ETH, actual real money um so we can try and test it in order to gain get some free ETH in these different type of networks you uh, can use these websites to go grab it so to show you what I'm talking about, MetaMask has a bunch of te test networks called Robson, Kovan, Rimpleby, and Corley. Um, at the moment, I would recommend um, Robson because, or Corley, because those are pretty easy to use. So um, the reason why I copy that, because I want to be able to copy this is because I want to be able to send ETH to all this stuff. So let's do that. some free money oh. and the ETH. In order for this one to work, you need to be able to sign into Alchemy. And so that's why I chose Alchemy. Plus ETH from this faucet, you need to just sign in to MetaMask. Um, it, my, my account 
that we just created. It's not going to be on there, so I'm not going to be able to use this. And Robston is pretty easy. Same thing. We'll use this right there and send it. Perfect. And so Robston gave me the mode E. And so it gave me 0.05 Gordian Gorley. So we're actually going to just try and use Robston. So one thing to note, if you try and check the balance here again, it's not there because what we did earlier is that we sign into Ape console without specifying the network. And uh, if we try and specify a network that's not listed, it's going to give us a giant list of things. So one thing. And so the way we uh, the reason why I chose to do alchemy is that you can see that there's a lot of dots of alchemy here. If you don't have alchemy installed as a plugin, you won't be able to see this right here. So that's why we chose to do alchemy. So we check the plugins list. Seconds. Probably check the Robson account. So in order to check Robson, Robson Etherscan, just do that. Robson dot there scan. No address. That's the right address. In a second, and uh, connect to it. Oh yeah, obviously I need to connect to a uh, real internet. Okay. One more time. Open this list. Perfect, there it is. We see that we have Alchemy inst installed. So if you have all the other types of networks installed, you're able to connect to it a certain, in a certain way. Check that out. While that loads, we see that right here. So in half an hour, should come up in half an hour. This guy should be pretty instant. So let's check Gorley. There it is, 0.05 ETH. So let's uh, try and sign in. I'm gonna do this one right here. Oh, duh, I need that. Um, let's just do Robston and use my old Robston account. So the ape, ape accounts. Let's cut. The reason why I want to use the old one is because I already have eaten Robston eaten that in there. We don't have to wait half an hour. I use Rob Dev. So to console network. Let's go into. Alchemy. Or Robson Alchemy. Alright, copy. There's perfect. Okay. Alright, Butterfinger works. Let's uh try and load it up. So let's do Rob Dev. You don't have to name it the same. You can really name it just uh, contract holder. Uh, it's something a little easier to call it Rob. Let's do accounts. Rob Dev. Do Rob. Balance. Perfect. And the reason why we do 1 by 18 is just makes it easier to read. So Rob Dev has this. And let's just copy this alias. Uh, see on this address what we got. 5 ETH. So when we deploy a contract, it should go down. So 
So now that we've got it, it's right here. Go back to it. And now that we have additional, this is only an optional step for because we want to be able to add testnet and deploy it. So now that you have testnet and testnet ETH in your wallet and verify that it's there, you can check it out. Check out a couple of different commands. So basically this account is ready to go to deploy and the deployment is the next video. And the rest of this video is about talking about CLI commands, about the ones I just showed you, and um, talk about if you don't want to do this manually, that you're done practicing, uh, and you want to interact with the accounts, you can do it through scripts. And that's why if you look at our docs, our docs, it comes in two separate ways. and. Uh, it comes in CLI references and Python references. And that's why it's broken down into that specific format. So, um, let me get into it just a little bit. So you can play with it like this, like that. And Python, I found it's Python modules. So in order to see the list of methods that it has there, you can do dir accounts, you know, you can deploy it, you can call, you can transfer, you can do balance. If you want to see the reference of this documentation, it's right here. And the difference between the CLI and Python is that CLI is how you interact with the account in a live Python environment, IPython, interactive Python. And Python modules are the internal classes for plugins. You can utilize them in scripts. If you want a little bit more understanding, come talk to me on Discord and Maybe we can talk about it or um, check out some of the sample projects that uses accounts more specifically the testing for, um, scripts in the our um, in our projects so thank you so much for listening